Yes, YouTube, welcome back to another video, and thanks for joining me. So a lot of you have been asking how Castro is getting along and want to take a look at her enclosure. So we're going to dedicate a video to Castro and her enclosure today. I'm going to go over how it's getting along, we'll take a look at Castro herself as well to give her some food. So if that's something that interests you, then make sure you stay tuned. Without further ado, let's get on with today's video. So we've had Castro now since June 2019, I think. Um, when I had her, she was about six months old. So she's just coming up to being roughly about two years old now. Um, since I've had her, she's grown a lot. And I think I was really surprised how much she'd grown myself as well. I've gone back and had a look through some of the older videos, especially when we added her, she was tiny. She could fit on top of Pothos leaf and she was just a lot smaller than she is now. I think when you live with animals like this, you tend to miss sometimes the fact that they're growing up and don't when you see them every day. But I know you guys do notice these things. But since I've had her, she's settled in really well. She's still a little bit shy and she's still a little bit nervous of me. Um, and I don't know whether we're ever going to get to the point where she's going to be an animal I handle regularly. But I still want to work with her just so she isn't stressed when I go into the tank. And I can work with her if I need to or if I need to remove her from the tank for any reason. That's as stress-free as possible. Now this was the first animal we added into the new rainforest room. For those who've been following the channel a while, you know we used to have an old rainforest room in a previous house. And obviously this is the latest one. We had a casher into this tank. This used to be Bert's tank, but I'll go into a bit more in detail on that a bit later on. But I haven't had any problems with Castro at the moment, other than the fact she's a little bit shy and sometimes she'd be a little bit defensive, but she eats really well, she does everything she needs to, sheds regularly, goes to the toilet plenty, and I think that's one of the downsides of Cuban night owls. You'd see their claws and think, oh, they must just climb, but no, they do have sticky pads as well, similar to geckos and climb through glass. So Castro's favorite habit is to climb up the glass and drop a crap all the way from the top to the bottom. So thanks for that, Castro. So one of the main things I want to get included in today's video was um, Castro, how I feed her, what I feed her, and hopefully catch her on film eating. Because like I mentioned in today, in, earlier in the video, she is quite shy and it is quite difficult sometimes to get a lot of footage of her. And what I'd like to do is try and catch some of her natural behavior. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna prepare some food in a sec. Now I'm gonna feed her some Morio worms, which I started feeding her last week, which she seems to really enjoy. And um, we've also got some fruit beetle grubs, which are a treat. So I'm gonna give one of those and some Morio worms. We'll set that up in a sec. What I wanna try and do is leave a camera set up and running on, this, on her food items, and hopefully we'll catch her coming out and scoffing a lot. Well, that'll be the ideal outcome. So why don't we go ahead and prepare the food now? Um, we'll head over to Castro's tank, we'll set the camera, leave her alone, and we'll come back in today's video, so make sure you stay till the end and see what we've caught. So let's crack on. Okay, so we'll leave the food in here now. We're gonna set up the camera on the tripod. We're gonna leave it running and fingers crossed, we'll get some good footage and some good action. I'd love to see how she naturally behaves. Obviously when I come in, first of all, one, first of all, she'll hide and obviously act a little bit defensive. Once I'm in the room for a while, she'll tend to relax a little bit, but I wanna try and capture her at best. So let's leave this run now. I got a couple of updates I wanna give you on some other enclosures. We'll come back and we'll take a look at what we captured on film. So I know a lot 
of you are really excited about adding the fish into the fire bellies and I'll give you a quick update on the last one. Now they've probably been in here for about two weeks now. Unfortunately we did lose one of them unfortunately. They didn't get eaten by the toads but there is some breeding behaviour going on so I don't know whether that was the weakest and potentially getting picked on but we're going to keep an eye on them at the moment. It seems like there's harmony in the tank really. They found some areas to hide and shelter from each other um, but they're doing really well and if at any point I feel like the fish don't have enough room or perhaps there's a bit of aggression going on I will remove them. I don't want to risk any animals lives but at the moment they seem pretty happy. There's plenty of food in there for them. They've got on top of the larvae issue now which is the reason we added them in the first place but I'll keep an eye on them. I can't see any reason why we probably need to remove them at the moment but I just want to make sure that they're not getting picked on and we don't have another one that passes away but unfortunately we did lose one which is quite common to lose a fish when you add them in there to be fair so I'm not massively concerned all the others seem really healthy reactive or eating so hopefully we'll carry on with that but I'm going to do a full video on the fire bellies uh, tank very very soon because as I mentioned before I want to get a lot of new plants in there tidy this up and I'm even considering adding an external filter on here as well just as an extra filtration how that's going to work we're going to have to bodge it but we'll have a look so plenty to come on this and as well there's obviously plenty of videos on this tank in the Five Valleys playlist I'll leave a link down in the description too. But we also got the bull python so let's go and check what's going on with him. So we're in the second reptile fish room, we're not going to call it down for my fiance though. <laughs> But in the last video we formally had a formal introduction to the new snake and the new animal in this room. Now I did leave um, it down to you to come up with some ideas for some names, so make sure you hit the, your name suggestions in the comment section below. But this is my brand new um, Pie Ball Ball Python, he's currently, I think his egg is picked on the 22nd of September, so he's still relatively young and we're going to be housed in a quarantine setup for now. So he's currently, when we last looked at him, his eyes are clouded over, he's ready to go into shed. Um, at the moment, he's, he's, that cloudiness is starting to disappear, so I'd imagine he'll start to shed today or tomorrow now. Now, hopefully, I'll come off in one, but obviously, I'll keep you updated as much as I possibly can. And I've added some sphagnum moss into his cool hide as well, just to help him along with that. And the only thing we're doing with this daily now is just removing any of the paper towels that are dirty or are wet and replacing those and cleaning the water bowl out every day and giving fresh water, as well as I spray down the sphagnum moss maybe once or once every other day, just to make sure he's got enough there to help him shed. But so far I'm really really happy with him, he's doing really well, I've started handling him recently maybe once every other day just to try and get him used to me, um, but also I don't want to do it too much to stress him out and he doesn't settle into his new setup. But we've got a full back active four foot enclosure ready to go, ready to build once I get a trim for the glass. So that's all to come, so if you're not subscribed to this channel now's a perfect time to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Okay, so we are back. So we're back at the desk. Now I've got the footage right here. So I set the camera for maybe about 20, 25 minutes, half an hour. Um, came back, it looks like we may have some action in here just because the bowl is now empty. So I'm really excited to take a look and see what she's been getting up to without me being around. So let's just go and take a look. Right, so I filmed her just before I left the room and she did come out, so we'll see what that video is first and then we'll play the one I've left running. Okay, so here she comes, she's spotted there's food around. Oh, there we go. She's gone straight for the grub. And I'll probably just re- I think, oh yeah, I'll just move the camera so we a better look. Watch your eye, Castro. Ooh. Oh, she's loving a bit of that. Now I started feeding her these the last maybe month or so and she seems to enjoy them once every so often as a treat. Now, I wouldn't want to give them to her too often because I think they're quite high in fat. But I think she's more conscious she's not going to get bit. God, look at those teeth. Can you see those serrated teeth? She just always blows my mind. I think she's the animal that's probably closer to resembles a dinosaur in this room, but she is beautiful. But she's grown so much now. Let's skip this forward slightly. What are you doing, Castro? 
Oh, Still thinking about eating it. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, and she's dropped it. Are you gonna go back to it? That was quite weird because she's always seems to really enjoy these, but the bowl was empty when I came back. So let's play the video where I left her. And let's see if that shows what happened to the beetle grub. I'd be surprised if she didn't enjoy that because she tends to love them. But, you know. Okay, so this is where we just left the video run. As you can see, she's noticed she's gone back. And now she's interested in what's moving around in her bowl. But it's really nice at the moment. I've started feeding her worms and other things like that, other than just crickets, locusts, and things like that. So it's nice that she knows this is a feeding spot. And hopefully she'll be the same now when I give it a fruit. But let's skip it forward slightly just because this does go on for 20 minutes. Oh, well, she's thinking about coming over. Yeah, here we go. Oh. She's thinking about it. She's only had Mario worms over the last couple of weeks. I've only started feeding her those. Just want to try and vary her diet up a little bit, as well as all the other animals. But I've been feeding her silkworms, um, wax worms. She's had, um, I'm gonna try on dubia roaches, cause she, I've put dubia roaches in her tank before, but I don't know why she eats them or chases after them. So I'm gonna try on dubia roaches probably this week. But I still had crickets in there, so I like to have a chance for her to hunt and her to get some exercise for her food rather than just her always coming over to the bowl. But let's skip this on a little bit more. Oh, I've zoomed in. Okay, she thinks she's gonna have a think about it. But usually I dust her food, well I get feed her probably once every other day, so she gets three days with supplements and then I give her a day off and then start that supplement cycle again. And I'll leave the links in the description for all the supplements I use for it and I just use a different one every day, give her a break on the fourth occasion and then start the same cycle again. The next one, so there's um, calcium, is a D3 supplement as well as some vitamins as well and I just use one of those per day. Well, per feeding, sorry. Here she goes, way. Oh, she's loving those Mario worms. I've never actually seen her eat any, so I won't actually show whether they actually escaped the bowl or whether she ate them in the past, so really exciting to actually see her behave as she normally would. Oh, she's enjoying them. I think she's going back for another. Go on, Castro. Rah. Yep, there we go. Oh, she's loving the Mario worms. But I don't know how interesting you guys find this sort of content, but personally I couldn't wait to come up and see what was on the footage and just to see her doing something rather than just hiding or puffing up at me when I'm around. So it was really nice to see her behaving naturally. And I think there's just one Mario worm left in there. And she should be done. But I'd like to know what she does afterwards. Because actually I think that silk, that grub is still in there. I don't think it's alive. She's chewed it up. I just wonder whether she's going to go back to it or whether she's going to drop it in the tank, but I'm sure we'll find out. But this sort of thing makes me really think, oh, it'd be great to have CCTV on all your tanks, but that would cost a fortune. You can have any more? She's thinking about it. She spotted it. Oh. But I think this one makes them so fascinating. Their eyes are like comedian eyes and they move completely independently of each other. And I think it just gives this such a lot of character. But then I'm biased. There we go, we. Oh, go on, Castro. Now I didn't add any supplements in this one because there is the day off. So uh, the day after tomorrow, I will feed her a calcium supplement, um, then a vitamin, and then the D3 supplement. And then she'll have another day off. But she seems to be doing well on that. I don't see any calcium buildup from her nostrils or anything like that. 
So I think the only thing left in it now maybe Oh no, I think there's a Mario worm in there. I think it's just the grub, so let's see if she eats the grub, because I'd imagine it's dead and we wouldn't have thought she'd eat a dead insect, but who knows? Go on Castro, there you go, last Mario worm. Oh, she's loving them. I'm playing it for the camera, not you. Mm, num, num, num. I think she definitely enjoys those. But if you guys enjoy this sort of footage or this sort of content in the videos, if you do, let me know in the comment section below because at times I record these sort of things, I sometimes just think to post it as it is and whether you guys find that interesting, I don't know. But I've got quite a lot of this footage as well. I've got probably two sittings of her feeding like this now. So if you want any more footage out there as a bonus video, I'll happily put it out there for you. But I'm more interested to see if she's gonna eat that grub. Because I don't know whether I've seen her chew things and drop them before. So good to see that we've done this. We've obviously learned something. Or if any of you guys have seen your animals do anything similar, perhaps any lizards you've got that chew their food, drop it, and then go back to it. I'd love to know the reason why. But, oh, she's spotted it. It's not moving there, I can see. Are you going to eat it? Go on. Do you need to skip this forward or are you going to eat it? Oh, she thinks she's going to go for it. She's looking. Are you going to have it? Go on. Go on. Are you going to eat it? Yes, she's gone back to it. Maybe, maybe it's because when she eats the grubs, the grubs tend to fold up and try to bite her and go through her eyes. So maybe she wanted to make sure it was dead before she ate it. But I don't know, that's baffled me. Because the Mario worms are surely do the same. But if any of you guys got any suggestions or any experience with this, then please let me know. But I think she's probably just gonna sit there now, so why don't we speed through this last bit and see what she does. So I've got a feeling she's probably just gonna scarf back, get to a vantage point, make sure it's safe, and then she'll probably hide again. By the looks of it, that's what she's doing. Uh, but I'll, I'll skip that together as a time, well not a time lapse, but I'll speed that up for you guys so you can see what she does after. But I don't know about you, but I found that really, really interesting and maybe something we should do with some of the other animals over time or with her again. And I'm going to try with some new food, like I said, this week. So if you want to see that, then let me know in the comment section below and I'll surely put a quick video together for you. But I really appreciate you taking the time to check out the video today. I know a lot of you want an update on Castro or an enclosure, so I hope this has helped. If there's anything I've missed, then please let me know in the comment section below. But there's still plenty of things to come. I've got videos coming out of my ears. So obviously I want to go through what I had for Christmas just because of such a lot of reptile and fish keeping stuff and I'm sure you guys would be interested in that. We've got some, I've got a new little setup as well for my windowsill which would be nice we can escape at some point as well as some other things just to make the animals lives a lot better and make the care of them a lot easier. So if you're interested in that then make sure you stay tuned and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. As always my merch is available I'm wearing the Panther Comedian t-shirt all designed and sold by myself and any of the proceeds you put towards this channel help put back money into these setups, care of the animals and the equipment to make these videos even better. So if you can do me a massive favour and go and check them out, I really appreciate any of your support. As always, for those loyal followers, if you can do me a massive favour and drop me a thumbs up, leave me a comment to show you YouTube been enjoying this sort of content and just allows me to make more videos like these. But plenty of exciting things to come in the next couple of months. Hopefully we'll hit the new year running and get a lot of new setups set up. We'll get the ball python uh, variant sorted and we'll just carry on moving forward with this room. 
But as always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video today. A massive thanks from me, a massive thanks from Castro, and we'll see you next time.